Uh, we know that God created marriage. Yes. But what was his intentions for it? Mm-hmm. Let's talk about that and much more here on this episode of Couples Pursuit Live Bible Study Edition. Yes. Hello, this is Vincent and Valerie Woodard. And on this episode of Couples Pursuit Live, we're going to talk about marriage the way God intended. Amen. Amen. And look, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. We adore you. We thank you, God, for your word and your wisdom and your guidance. And Mm -hmm. we thank you for this Bible study. We thank you for the people that are watching, God. We thank you for... Lord, the word that you impart to us, Lord, to be able to share to your people, to edify them, build them up, strengthen marriages, Lord. Yes, For we know you you birthed marriage, Lord, to spread your glory and your um, light throughout the whole world, God. And yes. for that, we say thank you. In thank the name you, of Jesus, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Look, we're Amen. so glad to have you here yes. with us on Couples Pursuit Live Bible Study Edition. Our goal is to give you the tools necessary to pursue and maintain a successful marriage. Mm. So if you're new, welcome. welcome. If you're returning, welcome, welcome back. <laughs> oh, welcome back. Oh, look, I'm early. Welcome back. <laughs> and we urge you to smash that like button and share this episode with someone that you think might be interested in this topic. So marriage, baby, the yes. way God intended. Your thoughts? Ooh. Well, it's interesting because um, I've been... Um, kind of watching this show I was telling you about I'm not going to name the show Mm -hmm. because I was doing a little research on connection Mm -hmm. and then I saw this show about um, people getting married without ever seeing one another Mm. and so I was intrigued to see what kind of connection they would have without being able to see or touch or evaluate what the other person looked like and it reminded me of marriage in the sense that oftentimes we get married based on what we do see, based on what we like, based on what we feel, Mm -hmm. based on what we have deemed as, you know, our person, our thing or whatever. And we see the outside of the person, but we don't really see the inside of the person. Yes. yes, Mm. yes. And so the inside of the person, good, bad and indifferent, Mm. all of their experiences, everything that they are, it can be uh, challenging once you get to know the inside of that person. Mm. And God knew this. God is... Uh, is the author of marriage. Mm-hmm. He is the founder of marriage. Mm-hmm. And when we try to do it any other way than his way, we find ourselves in trouble. Mm. And therefore, I go um, to the vows. We say the vows, we take them, you know, we repeat them because that's the process. Mm-hmm. But we don't really process them. Yes. We don't really know what that means. Mm-hmm. And so, marriage God's way is something completely different than what most of us are thinking when we're having butterflies and puppy love. That's true. That's true. When you mm-hmm. said the vows, I remember, I know there's some great vows done at our wedding. I just believe you. don't was. remember them? <laughs> but well, no, what shook, what, what, what I do remember mm-hmm. is that when he, when the um, pastor addressed me and said, do you take this woman? And it, it, like, it really hit me. It was like, oh, oh. oh <laughs> she's going to be mine. <laughs> Oh, it's, I'm it's responsible. Like, yeah, I'm declaring this to the world. Right, right. Yeah, so... Um, well, you know, that's the purpose of having... Well, I, I won't say that it's God's purpose. He does... The Bible does talk about having a witness. Mm-hmm. But at a wedding, those that come and those that stand with you are there to witness your union. And also, sometimes a pastor will charge the audience mm-hmm. with um, supporting the couple in their that's marriage. That's true, that's true. You know, so... That's true. So we're going to we're going to start in our Bibles, open mm-hmm. it up to Genesis um, one twenty seven. Uh huh. And we're going to read chapters, you know, one twenty seven and one twenty eight. Okay. And um, this version we're reading from the NLT, just because I like the simplicity of it. Mm-hmm. Um, just any version that you have is great. Um, I urge you to just uh, sometimes compare when you're yes. reading. If you need more clarity on a topic. Just compare, you know, different translations, mm-hmm. and until you get in your soul, you, you get a in clear your heart. Yeah, yeah. So, baby, can you read that? Yes, Genesis one twenty seven. So God created human beings in His own image. In the image of God, He created them. Male and female, He created them. Twenty eight. Then God blessed them and said, "Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth 
and govern it or have dominion, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Reign over it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. Mm, That is so good. That is so good. Mm -hmm. The image and the likeness. My first point Mm -hmm. that I want to um to to tackle or talk about okay is that we were created in the concept and character of god mm. Mm. we were created in the concept and character of god what does that mean we were created in his image mm-hmm. in his image mm-hmm. that means he's a spirit their spirit him all three facets of him but he's a spirit and when you say we, all three facets you mean god the father god the son and god the holy spirit right okay and the fact that we were created as spirit because at this point in Genesis 127 he's telling us these things before we were formed before man before he even formed he didn't form man until chapter 2 mm-hmm. well chapter 2 <laughs> yeah he didn't form he, we didn't get the re- re- recorded of it to later on right in, the, uh, in chapter 2 mm-hmm. but in this instance right here he's saying let us create um, mel- them male and female mm-hmm. and us yes and he's talking about we're talking about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. and in His likeness, which means that we're to it's the same likeness. It's a chapter in Genesis five three when it talks about the scripture. The mm-hmm. scripture talking uh-huh. about Adam giving birth to um, his son, mm-hmm. and it said that Adam gave birth to. He lived 130 years. He fathered a son in his own likeness and right. according to his image. Mm-hmm. So it's it's like we're in the likeness of him which means his character which yes that's that is what he made us to be a reflection of him Mm -hmm. into this world Mm -hmm. and i say us because in this point he's talking about male and female and he's talking about the first marriage the first union of a male and female Mm -hmm. And, and that is so powerful to digest that in because when you recognize who you were created by and then who, what he created you like yes I mean, there, there's you have nothing else to compare yourself to oh, i wish this or oh, i wish that i know some things you might wish you you might have might be a little taller a little shorter whatever but as far as your <laughs> essence god created you in his image and his likeness get this he also created you to be fruitful and, and to multiply, multiply and to fill the earth and to govern it. Yes. But he he but you didn't you didn't have you didn't have a body. Can you imagine that? He t- he told you he created you to do that. Mm-hmm. But in your mind you're like how? Right. How am I going to? I don't, how we're going to do that? I don't mm-hmm. know. But he's he's already thought ahead. Of what, mm-hmm. how he how he's going to create and form you form the man out of the ground and he's going to pour the rib out of the man and form the woman so mm-hmm. that's that's just amazing <laughs> it is amazing and then I believe it's in two where he goes on to say um, and he formed him from the dust of the ground mm-hmm. and he breathed into him the breath of life mm-hmm. and he became some versions say a living soul mm-hmm. and uh, nephish is the word for a soul but um, then he breathed life into us yes and then we became beings uh, in God's own likeness mm-hmm. and image yes that's yes. so exciting and that's so exciting that, yeah. it, that here it comes to fruition here, mm-hmm. here, here oh okay all right <laughs> <laughs> yeah I believe that's what else this is going on the, uh, off on the table well, I believe why that's your imagination Adam said <laughs> he said whoa what he called woman <laughs> whoa because he's like oh that's how uh-huh. we're going to do <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so, what are you talking about, babe? I'm talking about when, um, he, he, when he he brought the woman to her. He, when he formed, the, he put the man to sleep, and he mm-hmm. took the rib out the man's um, side. Mm-hmm. And then he formed woman. Then he brought woman to man. And he said what? He said, "Whoa!" <laughs> <laughs> and some people joke and say that's why they called us woman, a woman, because Adam said, "Whoa," mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, that's um, that's exciting. So it, it 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 is not lost on me that when you know there are conversations about you know choices, uh, 
fluidity, gender, uh, mixing different lifestyles, homosexuality, lesbianism. You know, I know that people have a choice to do whatever they yes, want to do. Yes. God gave us free will. And as a Christian, I have no hatred for anybody no, who believes anything no. other than what I do. But the weight of who we are, the weight of his creation, the weight of the purpose mm -hmm. that he has when he created us. Um, he said he created us to be fruitful and to multiply in his likeness and in, in his image and to have dominion mm -hmm. over the fish in the sea and the fowl of the, the birds of the air and all the uh, creatures that creep on the ground. Mm -hmm. And anything that comes in to uh, disrupt that process mm -hmm. is not ordained by him. That's right. That is it's so not good. ordained That's by so him. Good. Look, we're so glad to have you join. <laughs> hey, Tabitha. Hey, sis. How you doing? Good hey, evening. Julia. How you doing? Is that Dor Doria? Hey, Doria. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> Thank y'all so much for joining and hanging out with us. Look, right. on to my second one. Okay. We are equally equivalent but mm -hmm. extraordinary effective. What okay. I mean? What do I mean by that? Mm -hmm. God created them, right? Male and female, mm -hmm. equally. Mm -hmm. You know, some people kind of miss that part right there because okay. they they hear a lot about the man is the head. Mm -hmm. You know, the woman should be submissive, or uh, um, sub, uh, the woman should respect the husband, right? And and like like she's a weaker vessel. We hear a lot of that those undertones. But mm -hmm. at this point of creation, mm -hmm. male and female was created at the same time. Yes. And he said equally they were there. Male and female. Yes, created he created them. them. And when he gave this instruction to be fruitful and to multiply and to fill the earth and to govern it. Mm -hmm. Woman was present. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> so with that, I said that we are equally equivalent, but mm -hmm. extraordinarily effective. What I mean by that is that we're equivalent, but we're different. And our difference makes it that much more special that we have. You bring an item to the table. You bring a whole bunch of things to the table. I bring things to the table. But then we have this great feast in front of us because yeah. we have so many things that we can we can work and and the way we put our hands to God mm -hmm. will you know bless as long as we're in agreement right. from Him. And mm -hmm. I just think that it's amazing that that God will um, give us the ability yes to be fruitful and to multiply and yeah. for us to be able to be in unison with one another, put our gifts together. And you know, conquer the world. <laughs> and then, and then get this: the fruit of, in order to be fruitful and multiply, that is that is a blessing. Yes. The love relationship between husband and wife that brings about. Now, of course, you can just you can have the action, mm -hmm. and that will bring about the child, the mm -hmm. mechanics of it, yes, um, or the biology of it. But in his plan for us to follow his will and do what he has called us to do, yeah. He also has considered us. Yes. Because what a joy it is to be in fellowship with you, to 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 be best friends with you, mm -hmm. to have love relationship with you, and to be able to produce family mm -hmm. and a child in in the in the same way that God did. Children are producing our likeness. Mm -hmm. And they're produced in our image, but the source is God. Yes. Because we came from Him and He called us to multiply. He gave us seed. He gave you seed. Yes. To fertilize my egg. Mm -hmm. To multiply. Who can do that? I, it's it's, it's Man, amazing. Man tries how to duplicate it, but. <laughs> if you take one part away. Yeah. It all falls apart. Right. Now, we, we, we keep trying to substitute, and there's you no know, human genes splicing and all this. But yeah, no, but cloning. still without the seed, it, it's the, even with that, it has to come from You need organic. something. Yes. You need something that God made in order to create what God made. Awesome. <laughs> and you can only... You can only likely replicate mm -hmm. what God made. Even our image, when we look in the mirror... We're not even looking at ourselves. We're looking at a reflection of yeah. ourselves. Mm -hmm. So man did a great thing creating a mirror. A mirror is a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah. You right? do it every day. But even in looking in that mirror, we only see a reflection of who we are. That's true. True. Never Isn't really that seen funny? Your, your real face. Right. Ah, that was, that was from another lesson. That's wow. a side <laughs> Thoroughly. Yeah. Okay. Couples should practice patience. Peaceful patience with each other. Mm-hmm. We are here to live in harmony with our spouse. Right. 
we are here according to Genesis 2 24 said that's why a man should leave his mother his father and his mother and he's united to his wife and the two will become one mm-hmm. flesh later on it goes on to say that the man shall um well should well, I say pursue his wife or cleave to his wife mm-hmm. And I said, I think that's so awesome, of course, because oh, our whole thing is about me. couples pursuit. Right. <laughs> it's all about get by getting back to oneness, getting back to that connection, getting mm-hmm. back to that wholeness. Yes. You know, not saying that your spouse is complete, so you are a whole person by yourself. Right. But I'm saying as far as the marriage, the union of marriage, um, sometimes so many things try to come in between to split you apart. Yeah. And try to separate that connection that you have with one another. Mm-hmm. And so our whole purpose here is to try to remind you that we should constantly be pursuing our spouse and yeah. living in harmony with one another. Yes, because yes. like I said, he put them them he wanted them. I created them. Yes. You know, it's like you, you see if you had a child and then um you had a gift. Somebody gave you a gift. You have two children mm-hmm. and someone gave you a gift. They say, look, I want you to give this to um I want you to pick a child to give this to. Ooh. And you like, I can't do that. No. You have to give me two. You don't I have, have enough for all of them. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. To, I mean, if you told me to give this to so and so because yeah. you had a connection outside of If it was their birthday yeah. or something like that. But you that. say you pick a child to give it to. I can't. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you har- keep that. that would that would bring disharmony because when right. one child find out that you would favor them over the other, da 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 da. So that would yeah. bring this our job is to pursue harmony with our spouse yes yes and and not only with our spouse but i mean the word the word says also to follow peace with all men so Mm -hmm. we are to be in harmony and also there's a portion of scripture that said that uh brothers uh were made for uh adversity Mm -hmm. so we will have trials and we'll have triumphs within our family work relationships but also within our our marriage which again takes us back to the vows yes we have to remember that we have vowed to make covenant with god covenant puts god in the center covenant is god's original these are this is my summation of what it is it, it's god's original uh plan of promise mm-hmm Covenant is God's original plan of promise. He puts himself at the center. And when we join together as husband and wife, he is the glue that holds us together. Exactly, exactly. So we always have to remember those vows when he says, for better or worse, richer or poorer, sickness and health, to love and to cherish until death do us part. You can't separate any of that. The love part, you got to take back to 1 Corinthians, I believe it's 13. And what is love? You have to continue to follow love. Mm -hmm. Follow peace with one another until death comes, because adversity is for sure. Exactly, exactly, and that's why I say you have to pursue perfect peace with your spouse. Because mm-hmm. in, in this, God, you know, created many things. Well, this is the first time we hear the word. So let us create. create. Let us do something. Let us be in agreement yeah. to do this thing that we already agreed upon. So let's carry it out. Yeah. So that that. Um, the example of harmony that we already have when we were created is the same example that we should have as a married couple into this world when we go out and make decisions about different things. We, the world shouldn't be public hearing us arguments and, and, and whatever we're going on within us. We should be able to handle that, you know, behind closed doors and really not even get to the point where we have to argue and fuss and fight right. and all that stuff. We should be able to deal, you know, peacefully with one another. That's, that's why I put that in there. So yeah. we have a great example of it because we've seen it done when we were created <laughs> exactly and then also the word says um that uh what is it what is the proper word for but it's like god is not a god of confusion that's right and so when we're created in his likeness and image when someone makes something and you want to know how it works um you go to the maker that's, that's why they have a manual so when we have an issue our go to should be to go back to him go Mm -hmm. back to his word what has he said about me look in the mirror of his word because that is the true mirror that is the true reflection Mm -hmm. when we look into the the mirror of god's word and we can see how he meant for us to operate that's true and then we decide then we decide who um not who is right but what is right and when i say what that means the word of god because we can disagree in our own mind 
in our own logic and thinking, but we can't argue with the word. Exactly. It'll exactly. set us both straight. Exactly. <laughs> Look, number five. Okay. I have, I actually got this from my wife. <laughs> oh. And um, you said that we have the promise, provision, and protection of God. <laughs> <laughs> you're quick. You're quick, quick with it. I'm quick with it. According to Genesis 128, mankind has been blessed to be a blessing mm -hmm. to each other and to others. Mm hmm. So, the reason we were created, we were created in love. Yes. We were created for love. Yes. And we were created to, to give love. love. <laughs> I love that. Say it again, babe. We were created in love. In love. We were created to love. To love. And we was created to give love. To give love. Yes, yes. Th this, yeah. this world needs what you have to offer, what your marriage has to offer. Yes. It's, it's so... It's the time is now. It's always every time it's, the time is now. The, whatever is working on between you and your spouse that you know is causing you know division, is causing the separation, and you don't really understand how much it's affecting. But first of all, it's affecting you. Mm -hmm. It's affecting your countenance. It's affecting your hope. It's affecting your joy. And then it's affecting your spouse. Also, it's affecting their relationship, the growth with them. Then it's affecting your family. Mm -hmm. You know, then it's affecting your neighborhood, it's affecting your, all those things, your country, it is affecting yours, the whole nation. So it affects the world. Your yeah. marriage is that important. And God, he, that's why he started with that. Yes. You know, he could have said, well, I'm going to make man because man, you know, the head, we have to get, I'm going to get him right. And yeah. then he can, I'm going to the woman and then. He can get her together. Get, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, he, no. He, started with, he started with the male and the female. Yeah. And I just want you to understand, I want you to grasp, grasp the, the weightiness of that. Because this is not a time to keep, continue things as it has, as it has always been. This is the way right. it's always, we talked about this the last episode that we had. Mm -hmm. This is the way things always been. This is the way that I've seen it done. This is the way, the only way I know how to do it is strife. Mm -hmm. We argue. We don't talk to each other. Then I ask you what's for dinner and then we're back watching TV together. And Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and, we, and we never really work on those issues that are keep causing us division and strife and, and bringing disharmony in our marriage. So we have the promise the provision and the protection of God. God said <laughs> he blessed them. Yeah. I, I, I'm, that is just so, I don't think the words can describe the mm -hmm. fact that, okay, him, he made us. Right. Then he blessed us. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Then he said to be fruitful and to multiply. Yes. And, and all those other great things that we're uh, instructed to do. Mm -hmm. And so now you have the provision. Mm -hmm. And also you have the protection. God, I look, this is God has my back. God has our back. He's in the center of us. He's in the midst of us. He has our back. Yes. So, okay. So these people are, you know, you got financial issues over here you got family issues over there you got health issues somewhere in between and you're worried because you don't know if you can make it but well, god mm -hmm. has your back first of all you have to set the fact you can you can survive these issues you can overcome them will it be easy no i'm not saying it will be easy. no <laughs> but i'm mm -hmm. saying it would be worth it it would be doable do not mm -hmm. let especially do not let external issues become an internal problem and then don't let internal problems become a separation and yeah let and them division. carry over yes, yes yes because what what we i was um i was going to look up the the definition of of actually blessed i wanted the formal definition from the bible of what that means he has set us apart yes. and made us sacred um to him and so the bigger picture mm -hmm is God's plan and purpose, which is for us to come in, to have dominion and um, to to be fruitful and to multiply so that we would then make more disciples uh, after, you know, like God as well. You know, we create families of, of believers, families mm -hmm. of those that have dominion, families of those that are fruitful and multiply and that live in the purpose and promise and plan of God. And so when we have issues, when we get married, just thinking, oh, I want to get married because I'm just in love or I like her. He looks good. She looks yeah. good. I, our babies would be pretty. That's the silliest reason in the world. 
or you know whatever it is fill in the blank marriage is is an institution that should not be entered into lightly and yes it has all of the benefits of uh the feelings Mm -hmm. It has all the tangible carnal benefits, you know, the five senses, um, fulfillment and all of that. But it's not the primary reason. Mm -hmm. This is the primary reason. Genesis 127. He made us together for a purpose. So when something comes up against you, sometimes the first thing we do is retreat to how we feel. Mm hmm. You know that he or she is not making me happy anymore, mm -hmm. and so I need to change. No, what is your purpose? Yes. What is your purpose? It's such a strong uh, privilege, uh, a great privilege, and a great responsibility to be a husband mm -hmm. or a wife and to walk in the plan that God has purpose for us. And yeah, and to um, seek that walk. To yeah. desire that walk mm -hmm. for a long time i didn't to want to actively walk. go after it yeah i didn't, <laughs> I didn't want to move yeah you know i didn't want, didn't want to exercise my leg <laughs> <laughs> no i'm good i'm good over here you know it's like a I'm dog We're trying to get a dog to go outside and just, just want to sit right there oh this thing, that's a good analogy <laughs> you just pull in and they're like nope Nope. <laughs> gonna stay right here or the dog the dog who i see the image of the dog who grabs the the door <laughs> <laughs> when I saw this video of a dog who grabs the, the molding on the door when its owner tries to take him in to take a bath <laughs> or to go outside and that wow. dog is like, no, nope. I'm happy. Mm -hmm. This is what I want to I'm do. Good. I'm good. Uh, look, the sixth one that we have that we should persistently be pursuing our purpose. Yeah. God, God said for them to be fruitful. So what fruitful in the sense of this is that it's a metaphor for good deeds or positive actions. Mm -hmm. it's, it's you know because if it just if it just meant produce children mm -hmm. then he wouldn't have to say multiply right. but it's, it's it also includes yes making more people like yourself making more images of yourself in this world whether it be mm -hmm. from your seed or seed that you influence other people that you influence right now some people don't ha can't have babies there are many stories in the bible of women you know that didn't Right, and, they had um, and they, they still desired it, mm -hmm. but you know, there, there, it's not a thing that God is unaware of. Right. So, he, but he, when you think about fruitful, you said whatever that you that you are going to do mm -hmm. in His name, that you do it wholeheartedly. You do it with conviction. You do it with purpose. You do it with drive. You, mm -hmm. You're not always asking God, "Are you sure? Is this what I'm supposed to do?" God, are you sure? Is this what I'm supposed to do? God, I told you to be fruitful. So whatever you do, you do it in good deed, mm -hmm. and you do it in good action. Action mm -hmm. is a, it's a, it's a, um, it's a now word. It's now, a word that means yeah. it means to do it now. Yeah. You know, and if you're um, at a point where you're still wondering. God, I, I just don't know what you would have me to do. I asked you to start moving the last thing he told you to do and then start saying, okay, you know what? Now I'm starting to walk. I don't really understand where I'm going. Mm -hmm. And now, though, you would get some new revelations. Continue to read. Continue to read mm -hmm. your Bible. Continue to study. And, um, and keep seeking. Man, I find... I love commentaries. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't make an idol out of them. Right. But... I love the fact that there are so many smart people in this world mm -hmm. that have thought about this same verse that I'm reading mm -hmm. and have put their thoughts down on, on paper or in digital form. And this is like, okay, for my studies, this is what I got. Okay, for my studies, this is what I got. And then God would be like, he, he can illuminate some things. Some things yes. just pop off the, and I say paper. I've been reading the Bible on my phone for <laughs> forever <laughs> forever but but that is true and you know you say you you talk about the smart people who who put down their thoughts but we we are living epistles mm -hmm. right read of men mm -hmm. people look at us and they see our lives and the word of god one of the first things i learned in studying um the word of god is that all scripture is god breathed mm -hmm. and it's give breathed and it's given to us you know, for our learning and for instruction. And um, God still breathes on us. Yes. And yes. he gives us revelation. He gives us new revelation. Nothing is new under the sun, mm -hmm. but he gives us revelation. And just like those who are writing that commentary, share the revelation that God is giving them out mm -hmm. of that scripture. 
we also are to do the same thing. See, they're being fruitful and they're multiplying and they're sharing and they're inspiring and encouraging mm -hmm. one another in the word. Mm -hmm. That needs to be done. Exactly. It exactly. is inspiring to see it broken down and to hear it in, in layman's terms. As long as it does not go outside of, of oh, yeah. you know, God's in, intent. That's what, you know, I know you meant when um when you said you don't make an idol of it. Yes. Yeah. So and we do have to be careful about that. Yeah, you know, he gave us the spirit of discernment. He also gave us, you know, Paul tells us that, you know, the desire of prophecy, the desire of spiritual gifts. And of all of all that he can have, he would have that gift. But there's so many other spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. But he also instructed us to um, do it out of love. But the gift of prophecy is the fore foreknowing of the four um, tellings, not mm -hmm. like so much in the past, the Old Testament, where um, where you're going to give a charge, you're going to, um, you know, like you can change history, even though. It's already been written right, and it, right now because it's already done. When Jesus came, Jesus came and this, and He died, and now it's everything. It's already been done. So we live in a point where we just we get insights of foreknowledge. We can, mm -hmm. um, some, God would download. I say we say download, but He can, you know, give us revelation until you know what I see something that God wants me to say to you. He God wants me to give to you. So, man, I always be be knowing that. You know, he desires us to be fruitful. He desires yeah. us to do good deeds and the good actions. And in being fruitful, you know, even after you've gotten past the age of childbearing, being fruitful is this is an example of being fruitful. We've mm -hmm. taken what God has given us, what he's birthed in us, and we are sharing it. Mm -hmm. We are imparting it to someone else. And that part that person can then impart it to someone else. Mm -hmm. and, and they can um you know, be changed by the word of God, be changed in knowing that God can can keep them in their marriage. They're individuals, but he can keep them together. And that legacy can go on, you know, through our children and their children's children. And I encourage you um, as we close, uh, we came from uh, Genesis one, one, 27 28 and 28. Um, also, did you read? Um, no, seven, I didn't read the seventh one. The last the one. The seventh one. Okay, I'm the sorry. Seventh, the seventh one is love language is our love language. <laughs> what I mean by that? Love He's, making. I love I'm making. Saying. I'm sorry. Love making <laughs> is our love language. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Messed that up. I wrote it down so good. I like that. Go ahead. Expound, expound on that. Well, I mean, we are to... God made us to be sexual intimate with one another. Uh -huh. I mean, he just des he desired that. He was like, mm, "You're gonna like this." This <laughs> <laughs> he made that and said, made, and "It was good." <laughs> yeah, he said it was very good. It was very good. <laughs> <laughs> not specifically <laughs> intimacy, not but so much, I'm not talking about sex. Right, right, right. About, but I am talking about though the act of being sexual intimate with your with your spouse. Yes, it's a beautiful you, thing in the, in the marriage. I mean. Gosh, we talk about it because sometimes people can pervert it so much. Yeah, but in the in the it's confines such a beautiful, of marriage, thing. yeah, man, my goodness, it's the closest to the oneness that I believe. Yeah, that you can have to the point when God made them right. male and female. Mm -hmm. I believe every time we we are together, mm -hmm. not just us, but I'm talking about just married folks in general. Mm -hmm. If you're a Christian believers, that you and you believe that God is for you and you believe that Jesus Christ died and God raised him from the dead. All those great things. I believe that every time that you are intimate sexually with your spouse, man, you are there in that space as close mm. as you can. Yeah. <laughs> That's sweet. And, and, and there's such, um, there's such a beauty in that, that like you said, the world has perverted and they, mm -hmm. they have, you know, made it seem dirty mm -hmm. sound dirty we even you know avoid talking to our children about how pure it is if you think about it most most kids when you when you if i were to say well when your father and i were dating or when you were born mm -hmm. if i was like oh i remember this is when this happened or whatever sometimes kids get grossed out it's like ew, they don't want to think about you being together yeah. but our union is the most pure union yeah the yeah. union of a husband and a wife is the beautiful thing it's not the young guy and the young girl who meet each other and 
fall in love and and they are their each other's first and there's no commitment mm-hmm. and there's no you know it's not that I want to encourage you before we close to go back to the book of Ephesians Mm -hmm. chapter five. When we talk about marriage, the way God intended, it tells you what the husband's role and responsibility Mm -hmm. is. It tells you what the wife's role and responsibility is. And as you read that, remember that Vincent said he made us equal. Mm -hmm. Being submissive is not about the woman being lesser yes and it's not about and and the woman being the weaker vessel is really talking about her being the softer Mm -hmm. of the two not her being weaker than him that's right we have to learn how to rightly divide the word of god he made us for one another Mm -hmm. and if christ is the and he is christ is the bridegroom and the bride is the church then would the groom ever hurt his bride exactly would he ever take advantage of his bride would he ever lord over her no in a dominant a dominant way no no we are the example of the way the way that christ came to this world gave us a perfect example of how a husband should treat his wife how he should have patience how he should have you know um the the desire to see the best for them Mm -hmm. you know it's not just about what she can do for me or she didn't do something no christ was a perfect example he was um, the bridegroom Mm -hmm. to the bride Mm -hmm. which is the church Mm -hmm. and we are the bridegroom men to the bride which is our wives Mm -hmm. and that example right there whenever you're in doubt that's why we preach we teach from biblical principles that's why we keep bringing it back to your remembrance mm-hmm. because this is the, this is the foundation y'all this is this is you gotta what you stay can yeah yeah you gotta stay here because anything other than that takes you off the path of what god created and that is the thing that sometimes people who don't believe what we believe don't understand it's not that we hate you mm-hmm. or what you do um or who you are it's just that we know this is the plan that god has set out and when you deviate from the plan you deviate from your your purpose mm-hmm. and you deviate from your purpose then you you draw farther and farther away from from god and what he intended for you to be exactly exactly so those are seven um thoughts that i got of when i read genesis 127 that we you know, wanted to bring home to you and just yeah. hopefully maybe we can have you think and rethink and, mm-hmm. you know, every verse, every verse has so many nuggets in the Bible. Yeah. That if you, and like I said, you just pray for God for um, just insight, um, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Mm-hmm. Um, Lord, he, he would he would do it. He said it and Matthew. he will bless your marriage. Yes. He will. Yes, yes. So God, so, so um, baby, take us, take, take us, pray for the people. Yes, Father, I just thank you tonight for every, every person that's watching, whether they are single, separated, married, with or divorced. I thank you, God, for every heart that um, has loved or, or desires to love. God, I thank you for every marriage that is is represented here tonight, God. And I ask that you would just remind your people of who they are in you. Remind them of the plans that you have. Your word says you know the plans that you have for us. Plans to prosper us and not to harm us. As we read, God, you have a plan for marriage that we be fruitful and multiply. Even after our childbearing years, that we be fruitful and multiply um, amongst one another, Mm -hmm. making disciples. God, and just following your way, I thank you that according to your word, we are able to come boldly before your throne and ask, Lord, for what it is that we need. For So for those couples tonight that are in need of reconciliation, for those couples that are in need of, of ref- refreshing, those couples that are in need of reconnection, um, of reminding of who they are, God, I ask that you would, uh, that you would bless them, that you would let this Uh, this word, this study, let it rest on their heart. The words that we've read from your word, God, let it rest on their heart. Let it take root. Let them be reminded. Let it light a fire under them to make more of their matrimony than just being husband and wife. But Lord, that they bond together and that they find out what it is that you have assigned them individually and collectively as a couple to do so that your will and your way would continue to be done in this earth. And if there be any among them that doesn't know you as Savior, if you are that person, then we ask you if you 
would agree to repent of your sins Mm -hmm. and that if you believe in your heart that Christ is the son of God and that you confess, you confess that he is raised from the dead Mm -hmm. because of God. If you do that, then you are saved. Mm -hmm. You are saved and you're able to be welcomed into the family of God and to learn of him, to learn the plans that he has for your life and to be fruitful and multiply. And if you have been a person who is divorced and you're like, well, I messed up, I didn't do right. And now maybe God won't bless me because of that. That is not the voice of God. Mm -mm. God loves us. And he, when we repent and we come to him, he says he remembers our sins no more. So be restored in your thought, be restored in your thinking, be restored. May the joy of the Lord be your strength. And God, I just pray that as we always pray that you would bless the viewers, that you would keep them that you would make your face shine upon them, that you would be gracious to them and give them peace. Keep them from all hurt, harm, danger, sickness, disease, and virus. Teach them, Lord, how to love one another and to continue to pursue their spouse. We'll see you here again next time on Couples Pursuit Live Bible Study Edition. Bye. Bye.